So we are starting our biotechnology unit. So this is a video that's going to be a short introduction to what biotechnology is and different examples of biotechnology. So first, the definition of biotechnology is that it's the use or manipulation of living things to benefit life or society. History of biotechnology. We have, as humans, been using biotechnology for as long as we've been around through the process of selective breeding. And that's when farmers take the desired traits from one organism and breed them with another. And we've done this with fruits and vegetables, corn, cows to produce beef, our pets, dogs and cats, goldfish, tomatoes, etc. So modern uses of biotechnology. Now, we have kind of changed the definition. We're not just selectively breeding. We are now using technology to manipulate organisms or their parts for commercial or societal use. And for most of this, we are now using DNA and altering and manipulating genes of organisms. So as time has gone on and we've advanced our science, we're able to do things that we never had even thought possible. Now there are different types of groups that are involved in biotechnology. Companies produce and sell products for their profit. And there are pharmaceutical companies, and pharmaceutical companies make medicines or treatments for patients who have different illnesses or diseases or sicknesses. An example of a biotechnology company or product is called lovastatin. Lovastatin is a medication that's given for someone who has high cholesterol. And lovastatin uses fungus in order to produce this medication. Agriculture is another type of big company that uses biotechnology. Um, the agriculture industry has genetically modified food. And gen an example of a genetically modified food or genetically modified organism is the flavor saver tomato. And this is a tomato that was produced by Calgene in the early 1990s. And they produced a tomato that didn't um, ripen as fast. And so Previously, what agriculture companies, tomato companies, had to do was they'd have to cut their tomatoes off of the vine early while they were still green so that they could then ship them across the country or across the world. And then when they got to their destination, they would gas the tomatoes with ethylene and that would ripen the tomatoes. And so they weren't fresh. They, um, they had been off the vine for quite a while. And you know if you've ever grown tomatoes at your house in your garden that when you get them right off the, um, the vine, they taste a whole lot better. So with the Flavor Saver tomato, they inserted DNA into it that halted or kind of slowed down the ripening process. So the Flavor Saver tomatoes were able to be picked off the vine ripe, but then it would slow down, they wouldn't decay or decompose as quickly, and so by the time you bought them at the store, they still weren't soft, they were still fresh. But the company didn't make much money, and a bigger biotech company called Monsanto ended up purchasing Calgene. Companies involved in biotech also can produce industrial products. One industrial product that is made are, um, is a biopolymer. So we are used to getting plastics. We have plastics all around us. Our water bottles are made of plastic. Packaging is made up of plastic. And plastics are made from um, petrochemicals. So from ancient you know, oil fields, um, things that died a long, long time ago, they form this oil and that's how we make plastics. Well, a better way to make plastics is to get them from natural sources. And scientists have been able to make biopolymers from plants. And so this is a lot um, better for our environment. And they're trying to find ways to make this inexpensively and to replace have it, us having to use up all of our fossil fuels. And other biotech companies produce biotech equipment, so they're not necessarily making these cool products, they're making the equipment that's needed to be able to do all of this. 
and so they make products for biotech research and an example of a company is Applied Biosystems which is a local company and they make tools for biotech and the picture on the right that is a thermocycler used for PCR which makes millions of copies of DNA. If you take our biotech class you'll be using a thermocycler. Now other organizations involved in biotechnology are government groups, universities, and nonprofits. And they do what's called pure science. And they're not doing it to make money, they're doing it for the sake of knowledge, to find out information. So the intent is to do research that will then help people. And money for research comes from taxes in the form of government grants and sometimes from organizations or philanthropists. So other types of agencies that might be involved in biotechnology are our military defenses. They do medical research and also defense against biological weapons. Crime scene forensics, the police, FBI, etc., they use biotechnology to help them solve crimes. They will do DNA fingerprinting or PCR to help them figure out whose blood is at the crime scene or if they find a piece of hair. And basically when they just have a few cells, that's not enough DNA for them to analyze. So they need to make millions of copies of that DNA. And that's what the process PCR does. It stands for polymerase chain reaction. And this is something that you'll do if you take the biotech class as well. And that gives them enough DNA that they can then make a little um, grid of it like you see in that middle picture. They can run the DNA on a gel and find a match um, based on the whatever sample they had that had the DNA in it. Other agencies are omics, and omics is a group that basically publishes any sort of scientific research or article, and it's peer-reviewed, so other scientists or other experts in the field review it to make sure that it's valid science. And there are different groups. They analyze databases of genes and proteins, and a big project that came out of this is the Human Genome Project. And the Human Genome Project started out in 1990, and it was finished in 2003. It took them 13 years. And it was a group of scientists across the world that cataloged all the genes in a human. So they figured out what was on every single chromosome, what all the genes coded for. So multiple companies and universities worked together and they were able to decode our entire human genome. And then there are other agencies that help with environmental remediation. So they try to fix things that might be going wrong in the environment. Some scientists use biotechnology to help clean up oil spills. So they'll have bacteria that can be placed in an environment in the water and that bacteria will help digest the oil so that the oil can't harm and contaminate the other um, living organisms in the ecosystem. So with all of this new technology, these new animals, the new genetically modified organisms, all that we're doing, it needs to be regulated because we want to make sure that things are safe for everyone and safe for the environment. So regulation is generally done by government agencies. And some of the different agencies involved are the Food and Drug Administration, and they approve food and medicines. The U.S. Department of Agriculture approves new crops. The Environmental Protection Agency approves if a product is safe for the environment. And there are also some community and nonprofit groups that help in the regulation by doing research and um, providing information to help other organizations. And then you as a consumer help regulate the biotech industry. If you're going to purchase the product, that tells them, the different companies and agencies, that they're doing a good job. If no one buys it, like the Calgene Flavor Saver Tomato, they're not going to make money and they're not going to continue producing that product. So what are we going to do in our biotechnology unit? So the first thing that's going to happen is you are going to learn the skills and techniques needed to do genetic biotechnology labs. You are going to learn about and how to use the different equipment, such as this micropipette. You're also going to conduct a bacterial transformation lab. So you are going to transform a bacteria by 
inserting DNA from another organism into it, and you're going to create a GMO, a genetically modified organism. So you're going to insert jellyfish DNA that codes for the green fluorescent protein into E. coli bacteria. And that E. coli will then produce the green fluorescent protein, and it's going to glow green. So after that, you're going to research genetically modified organisms and participate in a Socratic seminar.